Well, hello, hello, hello again, and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Spotlight 2020. I am your host, Gail Nicholson. So good to see you again today. It's Monday, and it's not even being a Monday-ish Monday. It's actually been pretty good for me. How was it going for you? Um, if you are watching on Facebook, um, please give us some likes, give us some hearts, give, put something in the chat so that we know that you're here watching and we know who's watching. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, please subscribe. We are growing pretty quickly and I would love to see that continue. Thank you so much for your support for the Summer Spotlight. All right, so today, I get to introduce you to this really amazing woman that I was just chatting with her before we actually got on the air about her um, her self-made title, and it is brilliant. I absolutely love it. So let me introduce to you Miss Daphne Wells, Inspiritress of can do itness over there at DaphneWells.com. So thank you for being with us today, Daphne. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and thank you for having me, Gail. It's great to be here. Awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about the, you know, the, the background of this inspiratress of can do itness. I just, I'm gaga over that. I love it. <laughs> How did you come up with that? And I just think it's an excellent snapshot of you. Um, yeah, so uh, some time ago, a few years ago, I was trying to come up with a title, you know, to to describe myself in a couple of words and um you know I could have said leadership coach I could have said business coach I could have said you know life coach because what I do is a beautiful mix of them all um and so the inspiratress is about what one of my core strengths is being able to highlight exactly where people what's going on for them like what's going on underneath the symptoms nice. that show up and helping them work on that so that they can get the practical stuff done that they need to get done to get the results that they want so in that title there's this magical mix of woo and practicality which is really describes me and how I help others I I don't think that you could come up with two words that better describe you and how you work with others. It's brilliant stuff. Now, I see back there in the background there, there's a book that I'm pretty sure you're the author of, Decide. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Decide, Choose Your Own Path um, is my book that I published late last year. And it's about creating your own path to live your life by, really. Um, so, you know, we life's a journey, right? We walk through life. Each step that we take gets us further along the way. And what I have learned through the years um, for myself and people I've worked with is that when we have, when we know our path, like, and that doesn't mean it's a straight path because inevitably there'll be bumps and curves and right. we'll come to crossroads and choose which way to go. When we have a really strong foundation and we have lots of things in place, we can make those decisions really easily along the way. Because mm -hmm. what I found to be true um, through the years is that we as humans and more, more of us as women, we struggle to make decisions because we want to please others we want to do what's best for everybody else in our lives um and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're uh, that we're doing the work that we're here on this planet to do and so when we create our own path we can make decisions that are aligned with us and so life flows easier we get rid of all the the stuff that we don't need to be doing and we focus on what we do need to be doing Gotcha. So it sounds yeah. like there's a little bit of a shift into, I don't want this word to be received the wrong way, selfishness, right? Because self, for me anyway, selfishness is not, I, I'm going to take my marbles and go home. It's centering self first so that you can provide for others. And that's not the way generally people look at it. But from what I'm hearing, from what you're talking about, you know, that, that lack of ability to make decisions for me, for what, as a woman often comes in, I've got to get all this input from somebody else. Right. And then I don't want to actually make a decision till I've got that, which sometimes like puts things off. But when you're focused on, okay, what is it that needs to be done here? 
then it gives you that ability to go, okay, this is, it lowers the parameters, right? Like you can focus more into what actually needs to be done. Am I understanding this correct or am I completely off in left field? No, you're completely on track, Gail. Um, and, and I love that you brought that word selfish up because a lot of people have this misnomer that when we start focusing on what's best for us that we're being selfish and that we're actually thinking inwardly and just doing it for ourselves what we're not but that's not how it works at all because like you said when we are focused on what we know is best we are actually living our best life and we are actually therefore able to serve others Mm -hmm. so you know and one one thing I firmly believe is that self-care and focusing on what is best for us mm-hmm. is also best for everybody else. So it's selfless. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. That's a complete reframing because most of the time you hear, oh, you're getting your pedicure done. That's selfish. But having an hour to allow someone to take care of you does so much to fill the bucket of wellness so that you can start splashing on others. It's not about the pedicure. And the, it's, it's definitely not. And the thing is, Gail, that you can't you can't give to others from the fumes. Like unless your bucket's full, you're actually draining yourself and you're going to burn out. And when your life is out of alignment, so you're not, you know, so the, the frame, the foundation of the path that, that I build with my clients, help them build for themselves, is based upon their values and their vision and their mission are the core foundation. Um, And when you're really sure of that, you actually get rid of a lot of that clutter and crap that's filling all the space in your life. (laughs) That is an excellent way to, to put it too, because it is, it's like clutter in your head these unanswered questions and what will they think and all of these other things that distract us from being centered, being on task, on purpose, clear, you know, about what needs to be done. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So tell me a little bit about who you are and what, what actually like inspired you and drove you to do the work that you do now. So I grew up in an era in in a small town in New Zealand where there was a right way to do everything and you had to fit the mould or you were an outcast, which is what I always felt like as a child growing up, that I didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. I know now why I didn't, because we're not meant to fit in, we're meant to stand out, right? As a child, I didn't know that. And so I grew up with this... Again, two different polars, if you like, going on inside of me. So I'm an inner rebel. You know, I want to, I want to break out and do something different. And yet, I felt this need to conform to fit in. Um, and so I did conform for many years and did things the right way. And I was constantly burning out, constantly getting sick, constantly. Um, just feeling really yuck and depressed and you know not good um and so 20 or more years ago my marriage broke up and I was you know alone with four children um and needed to provide for them and find a way to be me and amongst all of that Mm -hmm. um and so that then began that journey of self-discovery if you like working out why why I was in this world and what I was here to do. And for me back then, that journey out of being in this box of pleasing everybody to, well, so what am I doing as a woman um, to be a good mum to my children, to bring them up a different way, and then to help other women. So I felt this really strong desire to make it easier in some ways for other women to um, get out of the situation, sort of situation that I found myself in. Gotcha. Um, and that was really what drove me to start. Um, I learned in that whole process that I 
was better working for myself, was happier working for myself than for others. Um, and, and amongst that process, I, I started a business, which I was very successful at, and then crashed and burned, and that business relied on me completely. So I ended up walking away from that, um, which was really heartbreaking at the time. Okay. And then um, I ended up buying an established business with staff under the misperception, if you like, that I would then not have to work as hard or work as longer hours. <laughs> like, exactly <laughs> <laughing> laughed. <laughs> Well, um, you know what they say, no matter what choice you have, there's there, there's a whole new set of consequences that come with. Exactly. And of course, with every choice and decision you make, you've got to own and be responsible for the yeah. consequences. So what happened in that journey was that I was approached by three different business coaches they portrayed themselves as. Um, and being in that situation, needing help I you know bit the bullet spent the money engaged the coaches and you know what they should it on me they labeled themselves as coaches <laughs> what I now know is that they were more consultants um you know telling me what to do you should do it this way and if you do it this way it will work out what I discovered was that those ways didn't necessarily work for me because they didn't fit with me, right? Um, they didn't allow me to be me. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so I ended up firing them all <laughs> one by one. I think yeah. you're right. They were, they were consultants. They weren't coaches at all. What, what you're saying that that's not coaching process at all. It's no. consulting. Here's what you need and, to do. Go do it. And, you know, I already knew that what I needed to do and it, there was a mismatch between the right way to do things again and the way that worked for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and principles apply in business and life, right? Yeah. And we need to personalise those so they're aligned with us because then they work. Um, so in amongst that process, I also met up with a life coach and that woman literally changed my life um like rewind a little bit in amongst that coming out of that marriage I'd gone down the track of learning training to be a counsellor mm -hmm. um because I'd worked with many over the years in amongst that marriage and I thought there's got to be a better way to do that so let's learn how to do it and find that better way right mm -hmm. um and I dropped that study because I found it was too negative. It was dwelling too much in the past. And I I'm was, laughing I, because you're telling me exactly what happened to me. I took my certification in social work and I looked at some of the stuff that they were doing and it's like, no, no, please continue. <laughs> so this life coach literally changed my life and work, you know, I worked through a lot of stuff with her. And it was forward focused. I, I could move forward rather than dwell in the past. Um, and I thought, gosh, if I could learn what she knows and bring my business skills into it as well, I could do a way better job than those business coaches and help with the, the personal stuff. Because yeah. what I learned in that process too was that that was what that alongside of what they were doing a mix of the business skills and the coaching um i believed would have helped me earlier yeah. um so i went down that track and um yeah so you know my coaching business has evolved over the years that's phenomenal <laughs> absolutely phenomenal stuff um magical mix in life that brings us to where we are <laughs> Agreed. It's it's kind of funny because as I'm listening to you talk, it's kind of like, you know, we have these side trips in our life. For example, getting married, having four kids, right? And then you go, okay, my life is not that anymore. It's something completely different, right? And creating what that is. But then you look back and go, well, was that a mistake? No, because going forward, these kids are going to want it's going to take to make sure that I, you know, create this and get successful because I got to feed my babies kind of thing. Um, I know for myself as a mom, I've done things 
for my children that I wouldn't have done if I hadn't had children to worry about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And nothing in life is a mistake. Right. Even the consultants, right? They taught you exactly what was possible and what was not possible with that kind of structure. Um, you know, so sometimes we learn by no, right? We learn by, by things that don't turn out how we want them to. And so I don't label those as mistakes. They are opportunities to learn. And, you know, I wouldn't rewind my life and do yeah. anything any differently because every step along the way, all the lessons I've learned have made me the person I am today. Um, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So no regrets. Um, yeah. That's phenomenal. <laughs> That's wonderful stuff. Um, okay. So I know you have this little program and I like the name of it and what it came, you know, what it brought up in me thinking about it. You've got a very good way of concisely painting an image with just a word or two. And this is called the Backburner Project. So tell us a little bit about how this developed and what you do with it and what you're offering. Yeah, that, that, came to me a little while ago that project and what I have found the last little while especially with what's been happening in the world this year is that there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of well what am I going to do next there's a lot of I need another stream of income um, so that I know that I can control this aspect of my life at least um, what I discovered in that process talking to lots and lots of people is that most people have these ideas that have come to them and they've shelved them thinking, oh, I haven't got time for that. I'm not the right person to do that. It's been done before, you know, and yet at the same time, these same people want, as I said, an additional stream of income to have some control over providing for their kids. Like you said before, you know, providing for themselves. Mm -hmm making sure that they have some say in their future and um yet there's these ideas that come into our head and we shelve a lot of them that all of them most of them they come to us for a reason because we're the person that needs to bring that into the world for whoever it is that will be attracted to us to receive those ideas right um and yes, those ideas that come to us may well have been done by other people in a different way for different people, right? So I thought, how about if we carve out some time, bring a group of people into a Zoom room together, and we actually work through what's stopping them getting that back burner project out? Um, you know, I grew up with the coal range, right? So you put stuff on the back and the side of the coal range when you wanted it to cook slowly, right? right? So that idea is cooking away in your head, taking up space, taking up energy, mm -hmm. like it's sitting on the back burner. So when you bring that forward and put it together, get it out in the world, you then create space for more ideas. You create space for more peace and more joy in your life. And you're sharing your gift with the world. That's beautiful. So the idea of that project, Gail, is that we come together as a group for two weekends. We spend a few hours together, a couple of days, one week, a couple of days the next week. And at the end of that, you'll be able to sell your offer. Right? That's now, awesome. um, yeah. And I thought, what if we can carve this time out and do this together with support? Um that's phenomenal. So, yes, I'm bringing that together and um, putting it out there in the world. Now, I know <laughs> there's got to be scads of women out there that absolutely need this project. Just for the simple fact that I probably have like three of my own that I know I could apply, you know, to this program, definitely. Um, I was looking at... Uh, extra streams of income and in the process of moving I found some stuff that I had written almost 20 years ago and I opened this up and I'm like this is done this is a book that's done that's been sitting in my closet for 10 years right 
it's it's insane the things that we do where, where it's like this is brilliant fully fleshed out yeah i can't do that right now i gotta gotta go do something else first and then you know we're lucky if we can actually find them and piece them back together when when we do have the time to do it but i think honestly without a program like yours my book will still be sitting in the closet for another year another two years another however long until my daughters are cleaning out my effects after my funeral and going hey i wonder if we could get this published and you don't want that, right? You just don't want that in life. You don't want that for you because you've put that together, that brilliance that is packaged up in, in your book manuscript as you have it so far. And so here's the thing. There are people out there who need to hear what you have in that project. And you're depriving them, which is... Guilt. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not trying to put any guilt on you, but that is actually the facts that, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and so I did that with my book, you know, I actually wrote that two or three, couple of years, two, three years, two years before I published it. And then, um, stuff happened. Um, and I shelved it, I put it away. And there was a few things that happened in that. You know, I got to a certain stage of it and then the doing the next, but that completion of it, mm -hmm. tying it all together, putting the bow on it and publishing it became too hard for mm -hmm. a myriad of reasons. Um, at the time, there was a lot of other stuff going on and I shelved it. But you know what? It kept nagging at me. It mm -hmm. kept the universe kept prodding me and saying, are you going to get that out there? Because, you know, yeah. you downloaded that stuff for a reason, right? right. Um, and so when I pulled it back out, a little bit like what you're sharing, I ended up rewriting lots of it because of the things I learned over those couple of years and the ways that I'd grown. I had more to put in there and more to share. So essentially it could have been two different books. Mm -hmm if I'd published it and then published a new one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I find that that actually kind of happens more often than you would think where you do create something or download something and then you set it aside, right? And then it really is a simmering, right? In the back of your mind, you know, and then later on when you revisit it, there's editing to do that expands the ideas and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes there really is a, a value to that back burnerness of it. But if you don't get it off the stove, eventually it's going to dry and the kitchen's going to catch on fire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and so it's not all, you know, like we've both used that analogy of the book, but what if um, you're a great, crochet and there's a lot of people out or a knitter or whatever there's a lot of people out there at the moment who are eager to learn those kinds of things you know what if you that was you and over the course of these couple of weekends we could actually refine that idea pull it together grow the confidence in you to put that idea out there get it out there and start holding classes either in person depending on where you live and if you're able to or in zoom you know it's mm -hmm. it's not just confined to courses and books right it could right. be you know you might um be an expert in knowing how to work a chainsaw safely that would be a good thing to know <laughs> wouldn't that right um mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, yeah, and and yet, if you don't, I mean, and yes, you can learn it from. You can find a lot of this stuff on Google, and it's not. So here's what I find when I go on Google to find no YouTube. I mean, to or Google to find out some of that stuff, mm -hmm. is that it's not communicated in a way that I get it. It's not communicated for me. Mm -hmm. So part of putting your back burner project out there and attracting the people who need to hear it from you is designing it in a way that they will hear it and that they will understand what you're communicating. Yeah. So that really comes down to 
creating that firm foundation, getting it all aligned with who you are and who you want to help and putting it out there. And then it becomes a no-brainer for people to pay you money for it, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. Because here's the thing, your book and my book, we could put that stuff out there in blog posts or videos on YouTube or whatever, but it's going to be really disjointed. It's going to not attract the right people who need to hear the message from us. Gotcha. You know, I think that there's a lot to be, a couple of points that are kind of fighting for priority in my head. First of all, one's a quote that from, and I cannot remember who said it. That's what's driving me nuts. But the quote is, there is nothing so fatiguing as an unfinished task. I mean, it just goes back to what we've been talking about, that nagging at the back of your head. And when you get it complete, it's energizing. It clears up space. Your, your, your mind is at peace for a few minutes. You know, there's, there is that. And then there's also this, um, if it's yours to give, then give it kind of thing. Like one of the things that I came to understand through a very intense personal development program was, you know, I would have things occur to me to say or to put in, right? And the times when I was af afraid to speak up, I could see that it didn't go as well as the times when I chose to, to speak up. And uh, many times you're thinking like, this isn't for me to say, this is for the leader of the room to say, and they're not saying it, right? So if I don't step up, it's not going to get said. And that actually becomes a stepping into your own leadership, right? And I think that that is very, um, it weaves in with what you're talking about very well. Because, it, you know, one of the biggest things for me coming up was all of these other people are doing what I want to do. I'm useless. I'm worthless, Right? But if it's given to you to do, it's yours to do, regardless of how many people are doing it, because there will be a niche of people that will only get it coming out of Daphne's mouth. The ones that will only get it coming out of Gail's mouth. And then however many other thousands of people are doing it, you know, their version is for a particular niche as well. Right? So Exactly, because there's so many, what is it, eight billion or so people on the planet. Mm -hmm. we we haven't got the capacity to help that many people right. with whatever our idea is right, right. yeah those darn facebook algorithms i'm trying though <laughs> <laughs> but no you're right it, and you just brought another quote back to my head somebody said to me the other day he says if you're one in a million there's still a thousand more just like you on this planet yeah, there is. And the, here's the thing, though. We are all unique in mm -hmm. that we, we there will be a thousand people out there have radio shows like yours, right? Like what we're doing now. And yet you will attract different listeners to everybody else doing it. And you'll attract different people to interview. Um, and you're right about those downloads that came to you in that, that personal development program. If we don't say it, the people who need to hear it from us are missing out. Yeah. And it's about being part of a community. No guilt, just being part of a community. It is. And it's about, too, I love that you brought the word leadership up. So a lot of us grew up with this perception that leadership were like bosses or teachers or, you know, people in leadership roles, if you like, and who controlled others. And yet, I'm a great believer that we are all leaders. Mm -hmm. We lead in different ways. Like we need to be the leading lady in our own life. We need to play that role that only we can play. We are leaders in our families. We are leaders in our business. We are leaders in our household. You know, you stepped up into leading, giving that message in that group you were in. Um, so it's about we are all leaders because we're leading ourselves. And if we're not, then we are, it's a little bit like decisions, choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. A lot of us sit back and don't make those. And yet in that sitting back, we have decided by default. Yep. We have decided to let the status quo 
remain. We have decided to let somebody else choose for us. We have made a decision and we, by not deciding, yeah. by not proactively, courageously and consciously choosing and deciding. So we need to own that. And therefore we come into that leadership role in our, in our lives where we're not playing the victim. We're not blaming others. We're taking that self-responsibility mm -hmm. for the outcomes. I agree a hundred percent. In fact, this keeps coming up as a theme among a number of different guests that I've had, whether it's conversations on the air or off the air. I think I need to do a special panel show just talking about what is the aspects of leadership because there's uh, so many people that have been raised or grew up into understanding leadership as this is the authority, what they say goes, I have to comply, um, you know, and if I don't, they're going to yell at me, right? That's a very mentally young version of leadership you know the authority when daddy gets home you're gonna get your ass beat kind of thing okay then there is servant leadership and that's a whole different animal that expands what it touches um now you're in new zealand we we have a general um named mattis up here um and as chaotic and confusing as our government structure is right now this general mattis his all of the people underneath him would step forward lay down and die for this man yeah and i was talking to a friend of mine about it and he says that's the impact of service leadership or servant leadership when you lead from these are my people and i need to protect and take care of them and I will, you know, defend them and I will go to bat for them, right? They will do anything for you. And they will go where you tell them to go. They will do the best job they can possibly can. That's a whole different world from when daddy gets home, you're going to get your butt kicked. Definitely. So, and we need more of that kind of leadership than the when daddy gets home, you're going to get your butt kicked. Yeah. Because... That is a way of, of the hierarchy wanting to control everybody in society. And that's not, no. that's not human, human life. It's not. Right? Yes. Yes. It's not. <laughs> right. Now, tell me about the project that you put into your back burner project, how you tested this out and did you finish it? So that was my book. Yes. Uh -huh. When I put it away for those couple of years. And I did, in the process of it continually be like, so are you going to get me out there? Are you going to finish me? What's going on here? You know? <laughs> There's wee voices in our head. <laughs> yes. And um, so in the process of that, I kind of learned what I needed to sort out and do to get that published. And the... You talked a little bit before about that clearing the space in your head. And when I published that, it was amazing. Like I was shattered, exhausted beyond belief. I took myself away for the weekend. Like I had a lady, brilliant lady, who was doing the editing and proofreading, reading and, you know, public uploading it to the publishers. So I took off for the weekend knowing that she had a couple more hours of that to do, but it was all done and dusted. And I knew I just needed to take myself away. So I went away to this beautiful little cottage in the mountains. And I was, just, I was, as I said, exhausted. Mm -hmm. And on cloud nine, you know, like just so excited to finally get it out there. Mm -hmm. And yet it was stunningly amazing the ideas that flowed into me that weekend because I'd created space for more if you like um yeah and so the process of me shelving that project and then bringing it back to life um and getting it out there I learned a whole heap about 
you know, through that whole project, even in the first aspect of it, refining what it was. And right. then, of course, when I pulled that off the back burner, I had to go through that all again, refine it all, make sure that it was aligned with all my values and vision and make sure that it was communicated in a way that the people who needed to hear it and who would want to hear it could um, and receive it. And then tying it all together, all the steps I needed to take. So, yeah. And what did you discover in that process? I discovered that a lot of the reason that I put it on the back burner was that it's been done before. I'm not good enough. I need to be perfect and know everything before I can publish a book. You know, all those kind of lies that the world tells us. Um, and we've heard them all our life. Um, a little bit like that analogy you used of leadership earlier, that we believe them. And so a lot of that process is supporting, is, is breaking that down, you know? And in doing that, I learned a lot that I'm going to be sharing with people in the program and actually walking them through it. That's um, which is why in that program, I thought rather than give them a whole lot of information and, you know, go do this, we're actually going to sit in the Zoom room and put yeah. the time aside, work through what comes up, go do some stuff, come back, work through some more. Because that's the process. That's what I learned in the process of getting that book out there was that there was so much came up that I needed support to deal with um, in me. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. The, one of the things that keeps me definite, first of all, yes, what you said, the, you know, just not seeing yourself that way, right? Um, but also for me, there's a lot of, I don't know exactly what needs to be done, so I kind of put off doing it, right? And one of the things that I discovered in doing this show even, you know, and just finding my way through it, at some point about three weeks ago, I went and I'm looking at stuff and I'm like, oh, I never would have gotten to this point without having done all of this other stuff before. It's like, there's no shortcuts. You can't come in at level three and you don't get to level three until you have worked your way through one and two. You picked up tools on the way, right? Um, so that brilliant stuff. And I love the idea of you guys doing it all in a group. As you were talking about that, I'm, I have this vision of, you know, a Zoom screen with you up there, there at the top and like nine different windows with they're all with their heads down writing, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I'm like, maybe that's what, is valuable to people is to have a space to go to at a particular time that they're going to sit and they're going to work on their stuff and somebody's there to answer questions if necessary and you could do a whole class just like we do virtual classrooms or maybe even better than we do virtual classrooms you know with people available you know and and class chatter going on who knows yeah. who knows if you rewind the clock you know, a few hundred years ago, women and villagers got together to do their big stitching projects. Like, can you imagine back before sewing machines where they made all their household linens by hand? They right. made their beautiful clothes by hand. And sitting and doing that on your own without a radio, without TV or videos would be soul destroying. But yeah. doing it in groups together they got on and they got it done. Um, and so kind of a little bit about creating that community, as you say, all heads down and then, you know, chatting together like, you know, I imagine it being a very communicative environment. Um, yeah. Nice. So that we're actually talking about stuff as it comes up for people. Because here's the thing, in a group like that, like you shared before, if it's coming up for somebody, it's coming up in some way, shape and form for everybody else in the room because mm -hmm. that's how we as humans work, right? right? Exactly. That's a great, great analogy too. Now, you're giving away something to our viewers today. What is that? Tell me all about it. 
So what I what I have created over the last few days, actually, this is hot off the press, is an ebook that nice. kind of runs through the process that we'll be going through in the Backburner Project to give people a taste of these are the things that probably will come up that inevitably do. And here's some things you can do for them on your own. Um, so for people who, you know, want to see a little bit about what's going to be in there or want to try and do it on their own. Um, although, you know, I've learned the hard way that trying to do it on my own is harder than it needs to be. And actually that support and vibrancy in there. But there's a lot of information in there. So, yes. Excellent. Awesome. So um, please do reach out to Daphne on Facebook um, so that she can, you can give them that book. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you've got like a, a lead magnet link to capture their email, if you're just going to do it through Messenger itself, whatever way, just reach out to Daphne. Um, I and, do it either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's totally, definitely worth looking at. Definitely, the, you know. Um, and then also, um, how, can, how do you want them to reach out to you specifically to sign up for that Backburner Project program? So again, reach out through Facebook or um, drop me a message um, and I'll send you the link for it. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. It's probably the easiest way to do. It's actually, I've created a... a a page about it but it's not I haven't actually put it up there on my website as an easy link yet gotcha okay great now do you have stuff to... gets a little bit behind what's going on in my <laughs> head and creativity sometimes <laughs> no <laughs> which I... is where Facebook is amazing for that <laughs> absolutely absolutely now do you have any final thoughts for our viewers today before we let them go so, I guess final thoughts is really about my core message really is that we all are leaders in our own life. We are all eminent leaders and eminent means that you are naturally that, um, that you don't have to do anything or strive to be. All you have to do is accept that you are and own it. Um, and as we said before, in our society, that's really tricky to do on your own. Um, <laughs> It's just the nature of the beast and the way we've been raised. Um, yeah, so happy to reach out, have a conversation. And also for listeners on the call, when you decide to opt in and sign up for the Backburner Project, um, if you let me know that you heard about it on this call with Gail, I will also gift you a one-to-one -one call with me prior to the Backburner Project so that you're super prepared to get in there and get it nailed. Fantastic. That's very generous of you. Thank you on behalf of our listeners. I hope you all take advantage of this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, my dear, thank you so much for your time and your inspiration today. Um, and thank you all of you out there in Facebook and YouTube and wherever you happen to be seeing this. Thank you for watching. Um, everybody have a fantastic week. Thanks, Daphne. When you open yourself, energy work makes that recovery progress so much faster. That recovery is possible. You do not have to live as a victim until your last days. You have unbelievable strength, and I know that because you're still here. Do you want to create something completely unrecognizable with your life? I can show you how.